New Delhi is not yet awake. The thick winter smog still envelops the city, putting all senses into a state of dormant amnesia. But one man sheds off his drowse and prepares for his prayers, as he has been doing since early last century. Shri Kartar Singh Dugal has been watching the world around him droop off to darkness and emerge out of it time and again throughout his life. He has stood steadfast all through these years, bowing his head before none other than the Almighty at this hour every day. And then begins his real worship, his salvation. Author of a fascinating range of literary works, Sri Dukal has been serving Punjabi literature since his very youth. Born in Thamial, a village in Potwar, near Rawalpindi on the 1st of March, 1917, Kartar Singh Duggal was the first son of Daroga Sardar Jeevan Singh. The young boy was always drawn towards an introspective world of words and their mysticism. He loved to watch the changing colours of the sky and the manifestation of divine beauty in nature for hours together. As his memoirs would say, his uncle, a Swadeshi revolutionary, was his first inspiration to create. He would go to the village Gurdwara and would spend hours in a remote corner reading all by his own. Then came the day when expression of words intrigued the creative soul of the youth. The evening was squally, but as the night advanced, it became stormy. It was raining as it has never done. Wind was fierce. Trees had been uprooted. The village road was washed away. Streets were flooded. The kacha houses started leaking. Kacha walls started collapsing. Then there was a cloud burst and several houses in the village collapsed. One of them was in our neighborhood of Lalu Mirasi. He was sleeping with his grandson Miru, who was my playmate, and both of them were buried alive in the debris. When the next morning we came to know, I was shocked. There was wailing and heart-rending cries all around. I couldn't stand it and I went out of the village. Wandering in the green fields, I suddenly found that my lips were vibrating, as if something in me wanted to find expression. And then I suddenly started humming, Sota hoya songya, dunia to pohongya, Buddha te agge khair jeen to akya hosi, Sol je munde par aus ki takya hosi. And then began the journey with the magic of words into the world of Punjabi literature. As Dr. Karanjeet Singh, the director of Punjabi Sahitya Sabha, evaluates Sri Duggal. Kartar Singh Duggal Punjabi de bo pakhi rachanakar ne kamal di gal e hai ke na sirf pathak ya lochik sago khud rachanakar vi apne aap nu pramukh taur te kahani kar hi manda hai. Halanki ona ne 
ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਦੋਂ ਰਚਨਾ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਕਹਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਕਵਿਤਾ ਰਚਨਾ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਕਵਿਤਾ ਸੰਗ੍ਰਹਿ ਛਪੇ ਨੇ ਕੰਡੇ ਕੰਡੇ ਔਰ 1959 ਵਿੱਚ ਬੰਦ ਦਰਵਾਜ਼ੇ ਇਹ ਕਵਿਤਾ ਸੰਗ੍ਰਹਿ ਅਸਾਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਜਵਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਵੇਲੇ ਪੜੇ ਸਨ ਅੱਜ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਪਲਬਧ ਹੋਣਾ ਜ਼ਰਾ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਕਿ ਕਰਤਾਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੁੱਗਲ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਵਿਤਾ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਨਿਰੰਤਰ ਸਮਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਗਲਪ ਰਚਨਾ ਨੂੰ ਨਿਰੰਤਰ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਸਮਾਂ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਔਰ ਲਿਖਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਕਵਿਤਾਵਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੋ ਸੰਗ੍ਰਹਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਉਹ ਜਵਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਉਮਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਨ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਵਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਭਾਵ ਹੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਪ੍ਰਗਟ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਕਰਪਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਕਸੇਲ ਨੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਾਹਿਤ ਦੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਕਵਿਤਾਵਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇੰਦਰੀਆਵੀ ਰਸ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਦਿੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੈਂਸੂਸ ਪੋਇਟਰੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਇਨ ਹਿਸ ਲੌਂਗ ਪਰਸੂਟ ਫॉर ਲਿਟਰੇਰੀ ਐਕਸੀਲੈਂਸ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਦੁਗਲ ਹੈਜ਼ ਰਿਟਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ 500 ਸ਼ਾਰਟ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਪਨਡ ਵਾਜ਼ ਆਫਟਰ ਆਈ ਫਿਨਿਸ਼ਡ ਮਾਈ ਸਟੱਡੀਜ਼ ਇਨ ਲਾਹੌਰ ਆਈ ਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਵਿਲੇਜ ਫॉर ਰੈਸਟ ਐਂਡ देयर ਆਈ ਰੈਡ lots of short stories chakhav mupasa bates o henry tolstoy premchand tagore and any short story writer which i could lay my hands on i read i read thousands of short stories and then short stories started oozing out of my mind and i wrote as many as 30 short stories at one stretch you know and those stories i brought to amritsar to my seniors writers san singh sekhum professor mohan singh and gurbachan singh talib sansing sekho read these stories and felt they were as good as any short story being written in the indian languages in the country and he was full of praise for it so was gurbachan singh talib so we published that collection of short stories card swear sar in the field of punjabi short story Dr K S Dukal is known as Ad Hazari This Ad Hazari means half thousand He has written more than 500 short stories in Punjabi and it will be very interesting fact that in Pakistan the number of Punjabi short stories total it's less than 500 so dugal is a writer with such a vast canvas while most of his stories evolve around the partition of india and the simplicity of ordinary human life some of them reflect his deep love for animals like come back my master the story of neeli the cow who lost her calf which has figured its way into the hall of fame of international literature Shri Duggal started his illustrious professional career with All India Radio Lahore in 1941 Following the partition of the country he came down to Delhi and from there on to Jalandhar There he stayed in this house for several years The establishment of the radio station at Jalandhar though has its own story establishment of all india radio at jalandhar has a interesting story 
when it was finally decided that country is going to be divided, it occurred to me, I was then at uh, working at Lahore Station of All India Radio as program executive. I thought if the country is divided, naturally Punjab will also be divided and the indications were that Lahore would go to Pakistan. So I thought the rest of Punjab, East Punjab will have no radio station. I rang up Sardar Swarn Singh who was minister in the Punjab government and sought an interview with him, went over to him discussed the problem with him. He said, it's excellent idea, why not move it, move uh, the center right now? So he wanted me to give him a draft letter to Sardar Patel, who was Minister of Information and Broadcasting in the interim government. I gave a draft and the letter was sent to Sardar Patel. After partition, when I came to Delhi, I understood that one of my colleagues who was junior to me in all less respects was sent to Jalandhar to start the station. It hurt me deeply. I used to go to Gurdwara every morning and that morning also I went to Bangla Sahib before I went to the office. After visiting the Gurdwara, I came to the office and the first thing was the PN of the Director General came into my room and after saluting me said that DG wanted to see me. I went up and the Director General said, look my boy, the, your colleague who I was sent to Jalandhar has not been able to deliver goods. So tomorrow, you have to go to Jalandhar to start a new radio station. During his long association with the All India Radio, Sri Dugal wrote several popular plays which were performed on radio under his direction. Kukku Mathur, one of his actresses, recapitulates the times. I was with All India Radio as a drama and music voice. And we did a lot of plays with Dugal Saab. What year uh, It is, I would say, late 50s. And uh, though we did many plays with him, and he used to generally, you know, direct his own plays. And I remember one play very well. Because that play, you know, it was uh, a part of an entry into some international uh, drama festival. And it was uh, called uh, Apni Apni Khidki. And it had only two characters and one hour play. So we were, you know, sort of, we were selected, you know, out of quite a few. And I, I was the lucky one, you know, who was selected, one of them. And it had some music also, so probably this was also one of the reasons, because I could sing also. And uh, that was the most memorable play that I uh, did with him. Towards the beginning of 1948, Sridhar Gal got married to Aisha, a doctor by profession and a Muslim by religion. We met in Lahore, where I was working as a programmer in All India Radio. Her elder such sister, Sultana Jafri, was also there, and we were colleagues, you know. She came to meet her sister and we came across each other. Yes, that's, that's how it was. And uh, then that was, that was a short uh, acquaintance between us. And then I went back to my college and we started writing to each other. And that's how it then Delhi. what happened was, then came partition, you know, and I came to Delhi. And she just finished her uh, 
course, MBBS course, you know. And we used to meet and that developed. But it was the partition of Punjab which left a very deep wound in the writer's heart. It started reflecting in his writings regularly and intrigued him to write his later novels, as deliberates Kulwant Kaur, one of Duggal's critics. Kartar Singh Duggal ne novel de khetar vich apne novel Andhra Nal Parvesh ki ta. Mote taur te asi ona de novela nu do hissiyan vich vand sak de haan. Pehla o jis vich ona ne pocho haar di tarti ate sabya chaar nu pesh ki ta. Te duja o jis vich ona ne vand, desh di vand ate Punjab de hor yutharth nu pesh ki ta. Desh di vand nu paame saade bhoat saare lehka ne apne ya rachnava da visha banaya. पर दुगल साहब ने जिस यथार्थक अति खोज प्रभू ढंग जिस खूबी नाल जिस कलात्मकता नाल पेश कीता उसे कारण पंजाबी गल्प जगत विच ओना दा एक विशेष स्थान बनया है इट वाज दिस ह्यूमैनिस्टिक अप्रोच एंड अ स्ट्रांग क्रिटिसिज्म ऑफ द नेशनल गवर्नमेंट दैट डेजिग्नेटेड करतार सिंह दुगल टू द अथॉरिटीज एज अ लेफ्टिस्ट एंड दस अ रिस्की पर्सन क्वाइट एविडेंटली he had to pay his price in all india radio i continued to be misunderstood because i was a progressive writer they said i was leftist and because of telangana trouble you know pandit jawahar lal nehru would not trust leftists so i was being chased from jalandhar to delhi delhi to hyderabad lucknow indore popal ranchi so i was tired so there was an advertisement in the paper and shri dugal joined the national book trust in new delhi as a director mr d n malhotra one of his publishers recalls those days of glory you know national book trust was started and actually jawarlal nehru was the inspiration he said that uh, books should be promoted and books should be published in all the languages and at affordable prices but in the beginning years they only published just a few books as a matter of fact once i remained a trustee also but the contribution of kartar singh duggal has been very unique prior to that national book trust was just publishing books and by publishing they meant production they would produce books but they would not reach the people and uh, normal public knew that there is a national book trust and they publish books but i think the final destiny of a book lies in its reaching the hands of the readers which is called book promotion now kartar singh duggal what he did was very revolutionary innovative book fairs were started i started exhibitions book exhibitions i started book fairs i had first book fair in bombay next in calcutta then in chennai madras and so on ultimately in 1972 i had world book fair and uh, we invited publishers from world over and it was a great success the last 3 years of kartar singh duggal's career happened to be with the planning commission under indra kumar gujral the former indian prime minister mr duggal's contribution in building the radio station in jalandhar is recognized by everybody and then subsequently he continued to function in various capacities in the all india radio i had the privilege of being a minister of information broadcasting when he was working with that ministry first in the all india radio and second in the planning commission as a time passed with every turn 
Shri Dugal grew taller, more as a creative writer than anything else. And therefore today, if in India we have to think and count the outstanding intellectuals and those who have contributed to Indian literature, Shri Dugal stands out very tall. He gave another proof of himself. when Rashtrapati nominated him to Rajya Sabha. Shri Duggal served as a member of the Rajya Sabha for a full term. The multifaceted writer has travelled widely across the world and has represented India at many international occasions with pride and honour. His works have been translated into several Indian and foreign languages. His efforts to excellence have been acknowledged many a times with an almost unaccountable number of awards, including the Padma Bhushan. I've known Kartar Singh Duggal for over 65 years. When I first went to settle in Lahore in 1940, I knew next to nothing about Punjabi writing could barely read Gurmukhi and just knew a few verses by Veer Singh by heart. I determined to relearn my own mother tongue and started having a little circle of Punjabi writers. It started with Mohan Singh, the poet. I think he introduced me to Duggal. He brought Professor Teja Singh once and Devinder Satyarthi, and I think once or twice Amrita Pritam, and I began reading their works. I continued my interest, uh, not as much as I should have, uh, became superficially familiar with Punjabi writing. Then came partition, and we were driven out of Lahore and found ourselves in Delhi. I think Dugal went to All India Radius to start with. I went abroad. But we resumed contact when I came back because my daughter, uh, he picked up to work in the National Book Trust when he took over the National Book Trust as director. I, the closest I think I came to him is when he translated the Granth Sahib. Translation is probably the wrong word, transcreated, because he felt that a literal translation, a literal translation would not do justice to the poetry of the language, and I think he was right. There are three things I like to mention about Dugal, uh, which stand out as his achievements. In the sheer output of work, I don't think any Punjabi writer, living or dead, has written so much and such a variety of forms of expression. Uh, novels, short stories, poetry, translations, you name them, and full, uh, fill more than one bookshelf in any home. He was able to do that because he did not indulge in wasteful pastimes like going to writers' conferences or cocktail parties. It was single-minded devotion to his work. The second thing which is equally important to mention is that he never solicited for recognition or awards. Uh, this is unique because almost all the people I know in the writing world have deliberately gone out of the way to seek Science Academy Awards and many others that come their way. Uh, he didn't. They came to him without his asking. He got the Science Academy, he got many other awards, and he was nominated to the parliament. Uh, this is unique uh, for a writer, particularly an Indian writer. 
And the third thing, which uh, I think again qualifies him for distinction, he, unlike Indian writers, has never indulged in self-praise. I know innumerable Indian writers writing in English, Urdu, Hindi, Punjabi. Their favorite topic is about themselves. And they'll keep on telling on their great achievements, how they turned the whole trend of writing in their languages, uh, the uh, acclaim they got from different people. Dougal, I have never heard say a word in his own praise. Whatever praise has come to him has come unsolicited. These three things make him stand out as unique amongst writers of today. Even more than his um, works in uh, fiction and in poetry, he has also been known to be a good critic. A critic who would not injure anyone, but at the same time, in his uh, very sweet manner, transmit to the reader what he really felt about the writing or the writer. And uh, he didn't only applaud, which is usually the case with friends, criticizing friends. He would even tell them their shortcomings, but in such a sweet manner that no, it, it, it wouldn't hurt him. But a look beyond all these attributions and recognitions would reveal a very simple soul who loves to be with his family and friends and is loved and respected by everybody around him due to his loving, caring and down-to-earth nature. In an attempt to attain the culmination of human values, Dr. Kartar Singh Dugal has been persevering with his ever active pen since a time most of us do not remember properly today. He has never tired of or succumbed to his long and testing journey through the ill fates of the nation, the world and sometimes his own. He has never lost his strong faith in human relationships, values and sentiments and would not stop at anything, even at this age, on his voyage to their greatest manifestations in his memoirs.